Uh, so I'm going to talk about multiple expression finder. This is joint work of uh, Martin Kroon, who is also present here, Timon Barda, Ben Bonfil, and Sheen Spool, and myself. And it is funded by an internal Utrecht University uh, research infrastructure project. Well, this is the overview, but I'll skip that. Um, so we're going to describe uh, multiple expression finder. This is an application that enables search for flexible multiple, multiple expressions in Dutch tax corpora. And uh, we do this on the uh, basis of an example. But there is a condition on that example, it must be in canonical form. And I'll explain these uh, terms later. It is embedded in Gretel. Gretel is a uh, tree bank uh, search application, originally developed actually here. Some of the developers are actually in the room. Uh, in, the, in the context of a cooperation project between Netherlands and Flanders uh, on Clarin, already some 10 years ago. Um, and in 2017, Utrecht University took over and extended Gretel, and this resulted in Gretel uh, version 4, and uh, with the embedding of uh, multiple expression finder in Gretel, we, have, uh, we are developing now Gretel version 5. And uh, the MOE Finder is a, an application to support linguistic and lexicographic research into multi-word expressions. Uh, what are multi-word expressions? They are word combinations with linguistic properties that cannot be predicted from the properties of the individual words that make up the multi-word expression or the way they have been combined by the rules of grammar. For example, a multi-word expression can have an idiosyncratic meaning so in Dutch, the uh, expression de boeken neerleggen, literally to put down the books, uh, means uh, to declare oneself bankrupt. Or they can also have an idiosyncratic form. So the Dutch expression ter plaatse literally means on location, and that is its meaning. So semantically, there is nothing wrong. But it has uh, exceptional and uh, idiosyncratic case endings uh, on the preposition and on the uh, noun. Uh, that cannot be uh, taken care of by normal rules of the grammar of Dutch. Uh, many multiple expressions are flexible in the sense that the, their components, the words that make uh, up the multiple expression, can occur in multiple forms. They need not be adjacent and they can occur in multiple orders. And this is illustrated by these uh, Dutch examples and even without uh, having uh, interlinear glosses, the boldface words are part of the, are the components of the multiple expression. And you see in the first utterance uh, that um, the uh, order is in a particular way. And in the second utterance, the order is in the same, but there is an intervening uh, word that does not belong to the multiple expression. And in the third example, you see that the order has been reversed. In fact, the last word has been split up into two words and one part is uh, more to the left. And in the fourth example, you see the same order as in the third example, but again, there is a word in between that does not belong to the multi-word expression. Furthermore, you see that the uh, last word uh, in the first uh, thing can occur in multiple forms. In the first sentence, it is a past participle. In the second, it is an infinitive. And in the third and the fourth, it is a past uh, tense singular. This flexible nature makes it very difficult to search for such multi-word expressions in text corpora. You probably can formulate queries uh, in existing search applications for Dutch, such as Nederlab or OpenSonar, but then in all cases you will have a lot of noise as well. Uh, what you want is uh, to uh, be able to make use of the syntactic structure of these uh, expressions uh, to uh, make a more refined search uh, application. We have embedded it in Gretel. The defining feature, the distinguishing feature of Gretel is the query by example method. You can enter an example and uh, then say by means of uh, a matrix which uh, aspects, how you want to generalize from this uh, example. And this same approach we do for uh, the multiple expressions. Here, you have to put an example, you have to make up an example of a multiple expression and it has to be in a canonical form. And we have defined what we understand under canonical form. Canonical form is important because you have all this variation. You can put such a multiple expression in many different forms. And we, uh, we have defined a canonical form. 
So we have defined them for multiple expressions in general, but specifically for Dutch. And some of the uh, requirements are, for example, that free and P arguments are represented by indefinite pronouns like iemand, someone, and something, and each something. Uh, another thing is that we want to do is to, we want to stick to the lemma of the words for the head of the multiple expression as much as possible. And that is feasible for most multiple expressions, except for verbal multiple expressions, because um, verbal multiple expressions can have subjects as part of the uh, multiple expression, and they cannot be combined with an infinitive. And even if there is no subject, then implicitly there is a subject and it's interpreted as an animate actor. So if your multiple expression uh, cannot accept animate actors as a subject, you can also not have an expression of this form. And for this reason, we require that in the canonical form for verbal multiple expressions, you always use the uh, future auxiliary zullen, the form of that. And there are many more uh, prescriptions on how you must make such a canonical form. Uh, but you will see that they are actually quite natural. This, uh, it, it, it always gives us uh, grammatical sentences and are quite natural rules. Then we have rules that determine gen generalizability. For the uh, normal case, you have to specify yourself for each case how you want to generalize. Here we do it for all multiple actions in the same way. Uh, and we have rules for that. So, for example, one of the uh, generalization uh, rules is that the head can occur in multiple forms if it is in lemma form. And a non-head component cannot be modified or determined. And there are many more such rules. Now, these rules, there are, of course, many exceptions to these rules. And for those, we have uh, annotations. So if a word uh, can occur in other inflectable forms, although it's not the head and in lemma form, you can add a plus to it. Uh, if a word can be modified, but it is not a head, you can add a, an a uh, asterisk uh, to it. And sometimes you have to include in the canonical form a word that actually does not belong to the multiple expression. But in order to make a well-formed sentence, you have to add a word. You can precede these by zero. And there are many more such annotations. Of course, it's not easy to make these uh, annotations, so we make, the use, make it easy for the user. We already provided a list of 11,000, more than 11,000 multiple expressions in canonical form with various annotations, and that is an independently existing resource that we are, is already publicly available, and we hope to deposit it at the Claren B Center soon. And here are some examples. So, iemand zal de boeken neerleggen. Someone will, the books downput, is the canonical form for the boeken neerleggen. Iemand zal de dans ontspringen. Someone will, the dance escape. And, for example, iemand zal een poging doen, where poging, the word poging, uh, someone will make an attempt. Uh, a poging can be modified and can be put in plural, so therefore it has a plus and a star. Uh, it's a count noun, and count nouns in singular must have an, a determiner with it, but the determiner itself is not part of the multiple expression, so the article un before it is preceded by the zero. If you have such a multiple expression in this canonical form, the system can generate three queries fully automatically. The first query is the multiple expression query. This actually searches for utterances in which the multiple expression occurs. The second query is the near miss query. That searches for the multiple expressions, but with unexpected forms, unexpected modifiers, or unexpected determiners included. And this gives a superset of the multiple expression query. And the third query is the major lemma query. There, this basically searches for the major lemmas of the multiple expression. Sim major lemmas, it's a little bit more complicated, it's basically the lemmas of the content words. Right? And that again is a superset of the near miss query results. If we apply this for the expression iemand zal de dans ontspringen, and we search in the tree bank Mediargus, actually also a tree bank that has been created here by Chris Heilen, uh, with 103 million sentences in it, we find with the multiple expression query 1,158 hits, with the near miss 1,271 hits, and for the major lemma uh, query 1,309 hits. The application gives the opportunity to uh, select uh, for a query those examples that were not found by a more restricted query. And if you do that, so if you have the near miss query, but 
subtract the cases with multiple expressions, then you see the cases where they deviate very quickly. And what you see very quickly then, and you can uh, see it later because we have a demo here, uh, that there are different determiners for the word dance than just the. You also find the, we also find elke, each. And there's all kinds of modification of dance with adjectives like financial and uh, ju judicial, and even also uh, prepositional phrase uh, modifications. And um, in this way, we see that the original uh, canonical form that we started with was actually not correct. We should allow uh, modification of dance. And if we take the major lemma uh, query minus the near miss, then we find a lot of legitimate cases of the, of the uh, expression, but our parser parsed it wrongly. This is, I mean, parsers are not perfect, so uh, this can happen. But we also found a new variant uh, for this uh, motor expression, namely aan de dans on Springer, where the dance is preceded by a preposition. And we can add that to the list of uh, uh, canonical forms. Conclusions, a uh, multiple ex uh, expression finder enables searching for flexible multiple expressions and it enables efficient determination of multiple expression properties based on corpus data, which can lead to an improved canonical form and probably a better canonical form for humans of the dance on Springer is the one that is stated here. In future work, we want to, there is an analysis component in uh, Gretel, also in the standard uh, one, also here, and we want to make a dedicated one for multiple expressions. And that will uh, allow you to uh, analyze the differences and the properties of the multiple expression even more, even faster. We also want to extend the canonical form for specific types of multiple expressions, collocations and support verb constructions. You can already deal with them now, but I think there are uh, options to do it even better than we can now. And I would like to make the uh, uh, query part of this system uh, uh, into, uh, use it in a program to annotate text corpora with uh, multiple expression annotations. And also I would like to have a version of Gretel that uh, runs as a kind of batch, in a kind of batch mode, where you, uh, let's say, all the 11,000 multiple expressions that we have run through the whole corpus offline, and it generates for each uh, multiple expression uh, a report that can then be inspected by a lexicographer or a linguist. Application is publicly available. I'm going to demonstrate it in a few moments. Uh, the, the URL is here. The source code for Gretel version 5 is publicly available on GitHub. The source code for the MB finder part of Gretel is also publicly online on GitHub. And the Ducama resource and its documentation is also already publicly available. And I hope to soon, when I add uh, Simni metadata, to deposit it at the Clarin D Center. And I invite you all to join me, uh, to join the demo at the Clarin Bazaar. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting work. Uh, I, I was wondering whether a user can modify the, the query in any way. So, you, for instance, you gave the example, uh, the Dance on Springen. And if, if a user wants to look for incorrect variations of this. So let's say so he wants to know whether someone is looking, uh, has ever said the dance vermeiden or something like variation, the dance vermeiden, which is not the correct version, but they want to include it in their query. Uh, can they say like, I want this part of the multiple expression to have an exact match and this part not, or is it? The design of uh, the multiple expression finder part of Gretel is the same as Gretel. And so you see actually the, the uh, queries that have been automatically generated and you can adapt them oh, just as you can in the yeah. normal Gretel. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. Thanks for a very nice talk. Um, in languages with a free or quite free word order, um, there's uh, quite a lot of work in multi-word multi expression extraction that is pattern-based and the main difficulty there is uh, setting the boundary correctly. Sometimes you will extract multi-word expression that fits the, the pattern, but it's only partial. Sometimes it's too long. Uh, does your approach solve this? And if yes, how? Well, uh, of course, you have to know uh, the multiple expression exactly, the which words belong to it, and then you have to make a canonical form and it will find exactly the cases that you want, provided that the parse is correct and provided that uh, the parser knows the words that are occurring there. And if not, you can fall back on the 
uh, major lemma query, which will always give you all the results. And, but then you have to do more manual work to filter the right ones. And then it's more or less equivalent, actually even still a bit better than the procedure that you de described. It's a little bit better because uh, if order is of no, no concern, uh, you can, uh, so order it generally has never has to be taken into account, except in coordinate constructions that we can build it in um, for multiple expressions because the order is determined by the grammar of the language. And uh, so you, actually in the multiple expressions, you should not say anything about it. And the second reason why it is better because we still have the syntactic structure and we can do statistics on the statistic structures in the cases of the major lemma thing. And uh, what I found, uh, for example, with when I was doing um, uh, Iman's heartbreaking to break someone's heart. Uh, I found uh, a lot of cases with the major lemma query that were not uh, found in the other queries. And then I uh, sorted and, and, and uh, I, I grouped by the syntactic structure, the, the link between the lemmas and uh, determined their frequencies. And there was one that came up very, very frequent. And I looked at it and that was my heart broke. I mean, and which is not, cannot be related in the grammar that we use to the transitive one and so we found a new uh, version of the and you probably would never find it or not su such in such an easy way with let's say the more traditional methods that you describe um, thank you very much for a very interesting talk um uh, perhaps you answered my question but uh, anyway i would like to ask you uh, have you tried uh, uh, have you looked into the uh, ratio between uh, this uh, the most relaxed uh, 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 way of finding uh, multiple expression and, and the most restricted was the uh, uh, estimated accuracy of just looking uh, on the base of lemma. I'm, I'm not sure that I understand your question. I, I mean, uh, what was the accuracy of this most relaxed way of, of finding uh, uh, just just looking to the lemma? Uh, how how large uh, error is is made in this I, way? We, we didn't uh, make any measurements yet. We oh. are the system is under development. We are ourselves experimenting with it we uh, are still documenting it and well the analysis component still has to be uh, well we have an analysis component but it is not in the actual system yet no. uh, but this would be interesting to see uh, what we found is that uh, with parsing uh, and this is true for any parser in uh, for any natural languages there are always attachment problems if you have a noun phrase and a prepositional phrase they can be siblings or they can be uh, a prepositional phrase can be a daughter of the noun phrase and the parsers make a lot of errors with that. And yeah. this is a typical case that you find all the, all the time uh, that, that are not, ex for example, with uh, the dance on Springer, then the, the dance in the canonical form I have, it must be an NP, cannot be modified. But if there's a PP under, it will not be accepted by the multiple expression uh, query, but it will be accepted by the near miss query. And these are most of the cases, uh, attachment problems. Yeah, because we, we, I was curious because um, when we uh, were extracting a lot of data for machine um, learning, um, we used such a simplified method just to look into the lemmas. And to my big surprise, the, the error was much below the ten percent. So, okay, <laughs> so, I, I don't have figures, I, but uh, yeah. it would be well. We should talk anyway because I yeah. heard that you also work on multiple expressions. So. Yeah. Thank yeah. you.